Welcome back to another YouTube video. What are we doing today? Bench and a little bit of deficit deadlifts. My top set was 147.5 kilos for a set of four. That was around RPE 7. Here it is. Now I'm doing some back offsets of 127.5 kilos for four sets of six repetitions. I'm losing my voice. I think I'm coming down with something. I always come down with something around this time of the year, so it's to be expected. I better whip out the zesty fruits, the blueberries, the blackberries, the strawberries, the oranges, the lemons, and the limes, because that is the one thing that seems to defeat these colds, just like I defeat the sumo demons. Yes. There's this new movement I've created. It is called the anti-sumo movement. I don't really need to go into why, because you already know. The majority of you have come from my Instagram and TikTok, so I don't need to explain it to you. Although, I guess, for the guys and girls who come from YouTube, basically, the anti-sumo movement, a thing I've created on Instagram and TikTok. One person, a while ago, basically filmed themselves doing the anti-sumo deadlift like I do. Well, back then it was just a very narrow stance. They tagged me in it, so I shared it. Since then, people have been tagging me in their videos of them doing the same stance. I'm very tired, I'm very fatigued. Not fatigued in terms of like strength, fatigued in terms of life. I've said this in the past, the mid-shifts ruin me. And I'm currently on the mid-shifts this week. The mid-shift is 10 till 7. I have no time in the morning. I have no time in the evening. In fact, going to the gym pushes it either way. It's an absolute rubbish shift pattern. But I've got to work. I've got to get paid. I've got to be able to pay the bills. So I suppose I've just got to sack it up and get on with it. So I'm bringing it back at the worst time. But at least I'm bringing it back. And not in the way that I don't want to bring it back. I'm bringing it back in the way that I want to bring it back. Just, I could bring it back at a better time. Yeah. Anyway, I've got three more sets of this. And then I'm going to move on to some deficit deadlifts. Coming up, another round of 127.5 kilos for six reps. Okay, so I'm either going to show another set of that or I'm just going to move on to deficit deadlifts. Okay, so I just did my top set of 240 kilos for a double with the two inch deficit. Call it a deficit deadlift because that is what I was doing. Now I'm moving down to some back off sets. 210 kilos for one set of five reps is the first back off set. Here's a little preview of the 240 kilos for a double. 240 kilos on the barbell with a two inch deficit. Let's go. Too easy. Lovely jubbly. No torn calluses. 
That's definitely a bonus. Hoicha. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. After this set, I've got two or three more back off sets. Although, if it is three, I'm only going to do two because I'm rather fatigued due to the mid shift and the inferior amount of time I have before my shift and after my shift. It's coming up to 9 p.m. I want to be in bed by 11 p.m. at the latest so I can be asleep by 12 p.m. a.m. sorry and be up about 7 a.m. I have said before that when it comes to the mid shifts I'm best off just getting straight up and making a beeline for the gym very early in the morning and I think that's something I definitely want to do or try anyway I'm going to crack on with set the uh, insides of my thumbs are rather sore at the minute so depending on how this set goes depending on the level of soreness um, I may have to sl slap on the straps I'm going to slap on the straps these are hard body straps I am an affiliate for Hardbody. If you use my code Ryan Price, I'll leave a link below. You'll get 10% off. Those will cost you about 14 odd pounds. They've got four rubberized grips on the inside for extra grip and a soft pad so you don't pull at your hand and the skin on it. I'm going to show one more back offset and then move on to my next exercise which I believe is incline barbell bench press or what I will do is go home rest up come tomorrow do the assistance exercises tomorrow and then yeah because I'm pretty damn tired right now the thing is if I didn't have to work that I wouldn't be on a time constraint. So maybe, just maybe, in the near future, that'll be a reality. And I can purely focus on creating content for you lovely guys and girls. But until then, I've got to work with what I've got. I've got to work with my situation and my circumstances in it. That's just life for you. Nothing is easy. Nothing will be delivered to your doorstep without a fee. And that fee is pure and utter hard work, blood, sweat, and tears. Anyway, 190 kilos on the barbell. I'm going to do this for five reps as well. I'm not too sure what happened with that first rep, but it was all over the place. It may not look it on camera, but it most certainly felt it. Very wobbly, very unstable. Instability at the 50% range. The alarm is about to sound. Anyway, what'll happen is I'll either cut to me doing barbell incline bench presses now, or I'll be doing barbell incline bench presses tomorrow. So it is the next day. I thought, hmm, at the end of that squat and bench session, or bench and squat, it wasn't even squat, it was deadlift, sorry. The end of that bench and deficit deadlift session, I thought, nope, not happening. I need to go home, I need to nourish, I need to rest. So I went home, I nourished, and I rested. <laughs> Anyway, moving on to some barbell incline bench presses. 
I'm going to work up to a weight where I can get three sets of eight reps out of. Solid reps and solid sets, you know, smooth throughout each rep all the way up to the end of the set. I think I'll probably work up to about 105 kilos. Benching like this on the incline bench feels very comfortable and I feel like I can isolate my chest more. Because I'm doing it in this funky way, I'm going to stick the two plates a size, uh, a size, a side, 100 kilos that is. <clears throat> doing it this way definitely emphasizes the chest muscle. Yeah, I mean, that was a solid set. I don't know if I'll be able to do two more of that, but hopefully I will be. None of what I just said made any sense, so the video shall continue on. This is actually my third set of barbell incline bench presses, because I needed to get in a set for the gram and the TikTok. But let's smash this out, and you get to see the full wrath of the barbell incline bench presses at play. You'd have thought, hmm, the seventh rep looks rather challenging. Maybe I should do the eighth rep a bit quicker, a bit smarter, so it isn't going to crush me, but not the way I like to train. I think to myself, hmm, let's make this more challenging. Let's pause the last rep and hope I don't get choke slammed by the barbell. Okay, so technically there is only one way of doing barbell rows. And that is, you pick up the barbell, bring it back with your elbows, get that nice contraction, then you probably stop about here, and then you come back up. That is to predominantly focus on time under tension, breaking down the muscle. But the problem with that, I find, is that, it not, yes, it breaks down muscle, but the form tends to break down a lot quicker as well. I have started doing barbell rows where I'll do the usual, pick up the barbell, draw back the elbows, nice squeeze. Instead of stopping about here, the, bar, the, the weight plates haven't touched the floor, floor yet, I'll just go down real slow, reset, and then pull. Yes, a pendley row, but with my own twist to it, the slow eccentric. So it's an explosive concentric, and then a slow eccentric. I find that's more beneficial for me because my form doesn't break down as much like when I do with the barbell row. Anyway, I'm doing three sets of six to eight reps.
<laughs> when I was doing my power building program and I did rows, I was doing sets of eight to 10 reps. I think I'm gonna change it up. Now that I'm doing a power lifting program, I'm going to do sets of six reps. Maximum of like seven, maybe eight, but six reps for me for the next foreseeable future, for the next foreseeable future, for the current foreseeable future, or Jesus Christ, God help me. I pray that you give me the ability to speak in an orderly fashion for just this one clip. Let's go over it again, shall we? For the next eight weeks, I will be doing sets of six reps when it comes to the barbell row. I'm going to leave it at that before I fumble. The way I'm doing barbell curls, I fumbled instantly. Right. The way I am doing barbell rows, technically pendley rows, is a balanced approach to building strength and building muscle. Or else, like I said before, the barbell row without touching the floor with the weight plates is more of a hypertrophic way of training the barbell row. And then the pendley row where you just focused on the concentric without worrying about the eccentric, that's more of a strength and power way of doing the barbell row. Thought I'd clear that up before I move on to my, my next exercise, which is pull-ups. Got the shorty box on deck. Time to do some pull-ups. I'm going to do three sets of six to eight reps, just like I did with the barbell rows, not barbell squats, not barbell narbell, whatever. Oh. Lord help me, I'm not too sure what it is about the, uh, the mid shifts, but they fry my brain. Yes, hopefully that doesn't clock me. I said clock, you know, what's on the clock? Yes, that's a watch. There's a clock over there. Yep, anyway. There we go. You see that little gangster lean? The reason I'm doing it is to emphasize the back muscles as opposed to the arms and the core, obviously. When you give it a little, when you give it a little gangster lean, you recruit more posterior chain. When you stick your legs ahead of you, you recruit more anterior chain, especially biceps and forearms. But then again, throughout the entire pull-up movement, you are working your forearms and biceps to a significant degree. It's just in order to get an emphasis on one side or the other, you either have to lean back or go forward. The heavier I get, the harder these become. I mean, that's no scientific breakthrough you need to have to uh, figure that out. But, um, yeah, let's do another set, shall we? I would usually add weight, but because I've done those rows, I was actually supposed to do the pull-ups first and then the rows. My back is slightly fatigued and I wanna get some quality reps out as opposed to just focusing purely on horse cocking a bunch of weight, which may lead to some slop top factory reps.
The shorty box almost got me tripping. Now here's a couple of notes for the pull-ups and the way that I do them. For one, when I'm hanging there, I then, oh no, retract or protract, bring in my scapula. Once I've brought in my scapula, I'm pretty sure it's retract. Once I've retracted my scapula, then I initiate, initiate the pull-up. I draw, I, I draw in with my elbows, I reach the point of no return, or in this case, no more range of motion. I do try to momentarily hold it there, and then I control myself on the way down. At the very end, I do a full stretch, and then repeat the cycle. Retract the scapula, pull to the chin, and then slow on the way down. That's how I get the most out of the pull-up. Um, minus adding weight to it. Anyway, now I believe I am moving on to leg curls, single leg curls here. I think that's the, the, uh, the exercise I'm doing next. I'm doing that to simply assist the posterior chain, the hamstrings, obviously, to complement the deficit deadlifts. Not only do you need to do some back work, but some hamstring work as well because the hamstring is a part of the posterior chain and the def deficit deadlift especially, but the deadlift in general, re relies heavily on the posterior chain. I generally think all my life I've had a speech impairment without realizing it because when it comes to conversating on camera, or maybe it's just the nerves, maybe it's some performance anxiety, perhaps I need a little blue pill to uh, keep me focused to keep me, uh, to keep me moving on to some single leg, leg curls for. Let me think of the word because my mind has gone completely and utterly blank. Brain freeze, or should I say, brain fog? Unilateral strength and stability is the uh, two words I was looking for. Let me just double check how many reps I've got to do each set. Three sets of 10 to 12 reps. I'm using 17 kilos. What a weird number. Anyway. This is a good way. Fuck it. Two more each side. Yeah, that's a good weight. I might even up it. Yeah, I'm going to up it. It wasn't 17 kilos, it was 18 kilos. That's one kilo, which is a bag of sugar, approximately, unless some of it leaks out. Makes a big difference. Now we're on 23 kilos a leg. Second set, let's go. Oh, that's definitely heavier. Yeah. <sighs> 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 
That's what I call posterior power. Okay, that was a nice set. I think I'll do another one of that. Same way, same way. Posterior power all the way. Moving on to the last set. Okay. Same intensity. Oh god. Yeah, my left hamstring is gassing out a lot quicker than my right. And that is exactly why I'm doing this unilaterally. Single leg, should I say. God. Could also be the fact that my positioning has been slightly off on my left leg, but I'm not going to make up any excuses. I'm just going to get this fucking set done. Okay. Yeah. That was pretty damn good. Now, my focus is explosive, concentric, and somewhat controlled eccentric. Because I want to work on that explosiveness. Whereas before, it was kind of like smooth throughout the entire motion. Because I was focusing a bit on strength and a bit on hypertrophy. A bit more. I'd say I'd... I was even a bit more lenient, um, edging towards hypertrophy, but now that it's pure strength and power, I've got to definitely adapt and change the way I train in order to build that explosiveness, to build those fast twitch fibers. Anyway, I've got two choices here. I can either call it for the video, do some core work off camera, or throw in some rear delt flies, which is most likely what I'm going to do. You're probably thinking, what the hell? What are you doing? Well, all I'm going to say is, Jeff Nippert. Nope, I'm not jumping on the bandwag wagon. Wag, waggly tail. I'm not jumping on the bandwagon. I'm not going to be one of those who goes over the recent drama, no. I am going to talk about a way I saw him doing a rear delt exercise on the pec deck machine which is the exact, well, there is going to be some slight differentials because I'm not used to doing it, but basically you get a nice stretch when you're here, you'll feel it in the rear delt, and then the squeeze is fantastic, I'd even say optimal. You get some nice solid reps out of that, a nice squeeze and a nice stretch, and in my rear delts, I'm definitely feeling some blood circulating the area. The first set, uh, well, yeah, the first side, which I did the left side first, 
A bit wonky, you see my feet everywhere, the way I'm doing it is everywhere. Second set, I started to get used to it, so hopefully the second set, not the uh, second side, will be a bit more cleaned up. Um, I'll film another set, and then I'll probably call it at that. I've sat, I am seated, and I sit here pondering over how my rear delts feel after the exercise I have just performed. I am happy. I feel a nice warmth irradiating in the muscles that need to be irradiated. Now, I don't think I'll replace this for face pulls. Hmm, what am I talking about? I did face pulls on the first day of the week. I could just do these on the second day of the week. Never mind. I'm going to do these on the second day of the week. They're nice. Anyway, let's do some more, shall we? Okay, so chest needs to face forward and I need to sweep the handle outwards. Squeeze and then focus on the stretch. That's good. Maybe sweep out a little bit further, see how that feels. Oh yeah, I like that. Not too far though, otherwise I end up locking out too far. Which doesn't feel good on the old shoulders. So that was... Oh, let's just say this is seven. Eight. Let's speed it up a little. One. Yeah, that is a good way of training the rear delt. Let's get the other angle, the other arm, the other side. More of a face on angle. I almost fell over, but I recovered quickly. Like a ninja. Right, so face forward, sweep the weight, squeeze, and then focus on the stretch. Okay. Yeah. I mean, obviously, that is a very light weight. I could probably do that forever and ever until the heat death of the universe. But I'm just getting used to it because it's a new exercise and I really like it. So I'm definitely going to implement it into the second day of the week. That is 25 kilos. I'll log that down. I'm now starting to log my workouts so I can look in the, in the past yeah, I can look at the past in the future and see where my strongest points were, where my weakest points were, what I was doing, if I should change things up. I'm even doing it with my diet. I'm logging everything on Chronometer, which is the app I use. I don't use my fitness power because everything you can do on Chronometer, you have to pay for on my fitness power. That is a wrap for today's session. I just finished off another set of the uh Interesting way of doing the rear delt exercise. Oh my goodness. I do apologize for covering up the camera. Bit of a newbie mistake that was. Camera? It's a phone. I do need a camera. I'll invest in one at some point. Once I have money, a bit more money. But um, yeah, today was a good workout. I do like these little like segments where I talk directly to the camera as opposed to just talking to the camera. I have a really itchy nose. As, I, as opposed to talking to the camera directly. Yep, I've already fumbled. Anyway, I'm sure you understood what I was trying to say. That is a wrap for today's video.